Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of The Random Watch Dude, and thanks for joining me today for another episode. I've got a really exciting one for you today because I got myself a Grand Seiko. Okay, so without any further ado guys, let's get into the unboxing and it's quite a complex unboxing because the great thing about this is Grand Seiko give you such a lot to look at. So we've got this nice cardboard box to start with, the outer box. It's in really good condition considering this watch, as I said to you earlier, this watch is 15 years old. It's a 2009. Uh, I still haven't told you what model it is because this is an unboxing and I'm saving that as a surprise. Uh, you'll see the watch shortly, but it comes in a nice cardboard box in really nice condition condition it's got a lovely smell to it as well and it's got a nice texture as well it's got a nice kind of laminated uh, embossed texture there really like that and that takes you once we've put that down guys that takes you to this rather large booklet here now this is a JDM a Japanese domestic model uh, Grand Seiko uh, and JDM was pretty much the only way you could get Grand Seikos for many many years until about 2017 actually you could only buy Grand Seiko they didn't really market themselves uh, at all really outside of uh, outside of Japan uh, so you had to you had to kind of go to Japan to get them so everything here Everything here in terms of instructions, this is a little instruction booklet here, uh, is written in Japanese, which I think is lovely. I think that's fantastic. And behind this really nice quality thick paper here, behind that, uh, we've actually got the certificate for the watch. And I will go probably into some more detail on this another time because there's a heck of a lot of information here. But of course, on the left hand side here, you can see that this is a certificate number. Uh, we've got the caliber. It's a 9S55. Uh, we've got a serial number for the movement. We've got a serial number for the case 8N. Uh, those two, uh, those first two digits there tell me that this uh, watch was cased in November. That's the N in uh, 2008. This is actually a 2009 uh, purchase uh, for the original buyer. And over here on the right, we've got an awful lot of detail here about the specifications for the uh, for the actual movement. So this wasn't, uh, it's a bit difficult with, uh, with the Japanese setup because they didn't actually give chronometer uh, certification to their watches, but they did work to chronometer standards. Uh, and what they've done here is they've listed all the tolerances uh, for, the, for the timing. Uh, you know, they've got a uh, mean variation of the daily rate. They've got maximum daily rate between two consecutive daily rates in the same position. They've got variation of rate between the positions, horizontal and vertical. Maximum daily rate between the mean daily rate and any individual rate. It goes on and on, guys, and they've listed the, uh, the tolerances here. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's that. And then that takes you to this really nice Japanese uh, thick embossed paper here, which unveils the actual case, the actual case for the watch. But I'm going to put that to one side. So the watch is inside here. I'm going to put this to one side uh, because I want to show you some more goodies that you get in the Grand Seiko box. Uh, in here we have just uh, again, it's all written in Japanese, but this is a this is essentially a, a very brief, uh, almost animated look, there you go little animations there in instruction manual how to use the watch uh, what to do what not to do bad shock they've actually written something in english there look bad shock and there's a guy playing golf uh, i think they're basically saying here don't play golf i think that's what they're saying look, nice shot there's a little bit of, a little bit of uh, comedy there from the japanese you know which they're not really known for are they you know you've got a guy playing golf bad shock uh, to the watch uh, nice shot so there you go, it's a bit of Japanese humour for you there. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. Um, what else we got here? We've got uh, we've got an instruction manual, which is uh, kind of dual language. It's written, of course, in Japanese, but it's also uh, written in in, uh, in English as well. So they were mindful of the fact that these watches did go overseas, of course, even though it was a Japanese domestic model. They were mindful that they went overseas. So you've got to, this is what you see in, with most watches that you buy now. But again, it's, even this is done really nicely. That logo is in a nice uh, sort of gold gloss and it's in a really thick uh, embossed kind of card. 
outer sleeve there. That takes us uh, to the last little goodie in here, which is actually <laughs> is actually the, the most important thing, which is the warranty card. And that's in a nice kind of very thick card, laminated, embossed uh, little folder here. And what we have in here is just a simple bit of paper. Just a simple bit of paper. This is the guarantee, which kind of folds out. Uh, let's see, let me just unfold that there. Folds out, and this will tell me. This will tell me a little bit more about the watch. So here we go. Serial number. The model number of the watch is the SBGR001. It's telling me that it's running on a 9S55 movement, and of course I got the serial number there, uh, and I've also got the purchase date. Uh, so this was bought from a from a Grand Seiko, uh, I'd say a boutique or an authorized dealer. And uh, what we have there is a purchase date there of 2009. So it was the 23rd of April 2009. Lovely. So I'll just uh, I'll just fold that up nicely again and put it back in its put it back in its nice little wallet here. And then I'll put all this to one side and we'll get the watch out, shall we? That's why you that's why you tuned in, isn't it? You wanted to see the watch. So let me just move that out the way. Here we are. Very nice. Look at this gorgeous case here, isn't it? Oh, that, guys, this is satisfying. The texture of that's like. Uh, Oh, I don't know what it's like actually, it's almost like velvet to be honest with you, very nice, embossed logo again, and here we have the watch with a nice embossed logo on the inner as well, in it. and it's in a nice pouch here, so here we are guys, here's the watch, let me just get it a bit more in the light for you there, so what we have here guys is the Grand Seiko SBGR 001 and as I say uh, this is a 2009 model uh, it's an automatic you can see there it's got a silver dial I'm going to go through some obvious specifications here guys silver dial uh, it doesn't have any loom but it's got very very highly polished hands and very very highly polished indices so the legibility despite this watch not having any loom the legibility is superb it is very very good the only time actually because i've had this for 24 hours now and i wore it last night uh, the only time it was a bit of a struggle uh, was in very very low light uh, because it's got a gray dial uh, and uh, and silver hands the legibility dropped off quite considerably then but uh, in good light uh, and it's a dress watch guys isn't it it's not a sports watch it's not a tool watch it's just a dress watch uh, this uh, this has got fantastic legibility it's an automatic movement and of course you know one of the great things about and what really attracted me to this particular watch of this era was the fact that it's still got the double, lo double logo so you've got the Seiko logo at the top and the Grand Seiko logo, logo at the bottom now that uh, that's the same on all the vintage watches and Grand Seiko and Seiko, of course, you know, Grand Seiko is owned by Seiko. Uh, but in 2017, I think it was, uh, Seiko decided to split Grand Seiko off into its own separate entity. And so now the, the Grand Seikos that you see will just have this Grand Seiko logo at the top and there's no Seiko logo. Now, this particular kind of set up if you like with the the double double logo as they call it uh, is quite desirable particularly amongst Grand Seiko enthusiasts and vintage watch enthusiasts it's kind of the old classic Grand Seiko aesthetic I suppose you could say so there you go and of course the other thing that's really uh, you know that's really stand out about Grand Seiko which, that sets Grand Seiko apart you know from the other watch manufacturers of course is the the famed and the highly marketed Zaratsu finish and I'm just moving this watch around a little bit so that you can see the the finishing on the uh, on the bezel there and on these sharp faceted corners uh, yeah you can see that even though this watch is 15 years old and I don't think it's ever been polished I think it's been worn and, and the polish has just worn slightly it's kind of not patinaed but it's uh, you know it's picked up a bit of a buff if you like over many many years of wear uh, you can still see that that polish uh, shines through that Zaratsu polish shines through really nice and it reflects the light fantastically I think so uh, just a little bit of detail about the watch guys and I will put this on shortly so that you can see what it looks like on the wrist but it's a 37 millimeter diameter case so it's just a tiny bit tiny tiny bit bigger uh, than a Datejust 36 and uh, it has a 12 and a half mil thickness and I think at this point I will take it off of the actual cushion there that lovely cushion and just show you how thick it is uh, so it's quite a 
it is actually quite a thick watch it's got it's got a really nice thick profile to it and look how steeply angular the lugs are and look at that in contrast to the the first link here and how that drops down with it to, in the same shape in the same form as the lug which actually means that although it's quite a thick watch it sits really nice and tight to the wrist because of the the angular kind of shape of the lug and the link uh, so that's that's a, a, a quite a noticeable trait that i noticed straight away you can see the crown there has got the grand seiko logo on it i'll just turn that around a little bit so it's not actually uh it's not actually a, a screw down crown uh, it's just a it's just a push in pull out crown which is fine uh, the watch still has uh, 100 meters of water resistance having said all that so one of the other things that really attracted me about this watch guys uh, was the back because you know i like a good case bag you know i like a good solid case bag and look at that beauty look at that that's gorgeous isn't it so solid case back and of course modern grand seikos all the dress watches now have a uh, see-through case back very nice you can see a, a nice pretty movement uh, i happen to prefer solid case backs that's just my preference and i very much like this one so what was unique about this watch actually guys uh, was uh, like i say that although this is a 2009 purchase uh, for the original owner this watch this model sbgr001 was first introduced in 1998 and it was a big moment for grand seiko because this particular model that, that, uh, that you're looking at now uh, was actually almost a relaunch of the entire Grand Seiko brand. Uh, they'd obviously managed to get through, ironically, the quartz crisis, although Seiko were a massive contributor to the quartz crisis for, for the Swiss watch brands. Uh, that was also a problem for Grand Seiko. Uh, because of course they made almost exclusively at that time automatic watches so grand seiko struggled massively during the quartz crisis to the point where they'd pretty much fallen completely off the radar and uh, back in 1998 this watch uh, was the watch that grand seiko actually used to completely relaunch themselves into the market uh, so it was new everything it was new case design new completely new automatic movement new everything essentially new bracelet uh, new clasp oh, I'll just show you the you know the much talked about Grand Seiko clasp now for, for you guys that are really into your Grand Seikos this is something that obviously you'll know gets whinged about a lot is this particular clasp it's um, I, I, honestly guys I have no problem with it at all I really like it it's got a nice flat profile it's uh, it's really nicely made and machined it's got a lovely click to it it's pretty much as good as my Amiga clasp in terms of its uh, its quality yes it's small it looks fragile but it's actually really solid and it works it's a dress watch and it works this probably wouldn't work so well on sports watches but uh, but on this watch which is a 37 mil dress watch it works really well so i'm pretty happy with it guys i'm just going to stick it on the wrist give you a wrist shot so i've got a 7.2 inch wrist and there you go i think this watch if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I think this watch is just about the right proportions uh, for my wrist. You can you see the chunkiness of it there. See how chunky boy this watch is. Uh, the, the bracelet itself is really nice quality. You can see it's like a five link bracelet with, with two skinny links either side of the center that are nicely polished. It's got a slightly sporty look about it for a dress watch, isn't it? I think. All in all, guys, I'm delighted with this watch. Really, really very happy with it indeed. So we're going to cut back to uh, to the end of the video now, and I'm going to talk to you about a little review that I'm going to do, a little comparison review as well. So there we are, guys. Uh, that's the unboxing of uh, my new uh, Grand Seiko watch. Here it is uh, in, uh, in its full glory on my 7.2-inch wrist. It's a 37mm diameter watch, so some might say it's quite a small watch, but I think it works quite well. Now, guys, I just wanted to talk briefly about how I ended up buying this watch. And uh, I kind of, uh, I followed some of my normal purchasing rules, but I broke a couple of others. Uh, the normal purchasing rule that I have is that I never buy a watch on a whim. And I definitely didn't. I actually bought this watch, having slept on it overnight and thought about it and made sure that it made financial sense and everything like that, which it did. 
Uh, but the, the rule that I broke was that, uh, it, and it was a self-imposed rule for this year, is that I wasn't just going to kind of just buy watches randomly, uh, which is what I've basically done for the last 10, 12 years, is just buy watches randomly and, and try them out and see if I enjoy them. Uh, but I did see this one come up uh, from my favourite seller in Japan. I saw it on Chrono24. I really, really loved the look of it. I wasn't actually looking for a Grand Seiko. Uh, I, I certainly wasn't looking for, uh, you know, for a 15-year-old automatic uh, because I've said in the past that I think if I get another Grand Seiko, I'd either get a spring drive or a quartz. Uh, I ended up getting the auto again, but I'm really happy with this, guys. And the reason I'm really happy with it is because it kind of fell into a, a category uh, which works for me right now, which is that it was the right price. It was a very, very... Look, it's, it's relative. I shouldn't say it was very, very inexpensive. It was still a shitload of money, guys. I mean, we're still talking 2,000 US dollars. You know, three, was it three, just over 3,000 uh, New Zealand dollars for me, uh, which is about 1,500 uh, quid, 1,500 pounds. Uh, so yeah, look, it's, it's not inexpensive, but relative to the luxury watch market and relative to Grand Seiko watches, it's, it's pretty inexpensive, relatively speaking. So it kind of filled that category. It fit into that category really well for me. Uh, I'm very happy with it. So what I'm going to do, just to round this whole video off, what I'm actually going to do, guys, is I'm going to do a comparison video very soon, over the next few days. I'm going to put this watch right up against my Datejust, my Rolex Datejust 36, with the Palm Motif dial. You've probably seen that one if you watched my channel before. There's just a quick close-up of, uh, of the Grand Seiko. Uh, I'm going to put this right up against my DJ, and I'm going to do a, a very kind of uh, unbiased unpartisan review of these two watches. I'm going to put them up against each other. They're both pretty much the same size. They fit into pretty much the same category. They're both automatics. Um, I don't see why I shouldn't do a, a really good uh, comparison of those two watches and tell you what I think. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you haven't already, please do uh, thumbs up like subscribe and do all that fun stuff so that the youtube algorithm spreads the word and uh, thanks for watching the video guys and i look forward to seeing you on the next one